on my YouTube channel. I wanted to check out some of the other people that I've subscribed to, and I wanted to check out Adam Corey. Uh, he's got a lot of really good, reasonably short coding videos, and um, I definitely think that he's a very good instructor, and if you're interested in web development, then check out his YouTube channel. It's pretty good. Now this stuff right here, it looks like it's been about six months since he's put any videos out, but they're definitely worth looking at. This one, uh, the analog clock development tutorial, was only uh, 16 and a half minutes long, which is so much nicer than my videos. My videos are very long. I don't know how he does it, but he really can pack a lot of information into a short period of time, and it's not boring. Um, but anyway, based on this particular tutorial, I wound up following his code and adding my own little bit of something to it. As you can see here, I've got two files, analogclock.html, uh, that is the web page, and the analogclock.js, that's the JavaScript. So let's look at the web page first. We've got our doc type declaration, our opening and closing HTML tags. As you can see, they're highlighted in purple right now. Opening and closing head tags. Inside of the head tags, we've got opening and closing title tags. And I just titled it analog clock underscore October 22nd underscore 2019. And what happens when you run this web page, I'll launch it in Firefox, uh, the title is what's up here in the tab and this is how my page came out it's really not a web page for anything it's just I mean it is a web page but uh, it's not created for anything specific it's just taking his tutorials and you know trying a little bit here a little bit there as you can see I've got three um, field sets here and down here I didn't do anything in the third field set so I'll probably just delete that out uh, let's go back Okay, so the title, again, is right up here. So you name your title whatever you want. This line right here, script, SRC, is, for sh is uh, short for source, and it is set equal to analogclock.js, and that's the external JavaScript file that I'm going to go over right here. Again, all this is based on Adam Corey's tutorial. Okay, so then after that pointing uh, link, to an external JavaScript, I have style tags. So if I open this up, it goes from line 7, and uh, the styles go all the way to uh, line 165. And because I've got two analog clocks here, you're going to see repeat code. But the interesting thing in seeing repeat code is that it helps reinforce what you're looking at. So let's take a look at the CSS style styles. I'm just going to highlight the statements and you can pause it and copy it and then change it as you want for to, to make it your own. But for the body, we have the text align set to center. A background is set to that specific color. It's uh, the uh, pound OOECB9 is this light, like a seafoam green color. Font family is sans serif and font weight is 100. Then I've got a div. I've got uh, divs with the uh, names or the IDs rather output 1, output 2, and output 3. This isn't so significant in this particular project, uh, but this happens to be what's in my CSS. You can use it or not use it. It's completely up to you. But as you can see, the border, the padding, the margin, the width, the height, and the text line all have settings. I am using field sets because the field sets are nice. It kind of uh, con it gives you like a container, if you will, to put your information. You get a, a nice thin line around what you're doing. Plus up here, it's like a little caption. It's like a little title of whatever you want. That's the legend. The field sets the tiny line all the way around whatever it is I'm doing. And I just like how that organizes my code uh, as far as the output. So anyway, my field sets have a float set to left, and the width was originally given 300 pixels, but I've zed it out so it's like that line doesn't even exist. There's some divs that have the idea of clock 1 and clock 2, 
and they share these styles. They've got a position, a background, a width, a height, a z-index, and opacity. The opacity set to 0.5 allows you to see through the clock to a picture behind it. As you can see, there's two clocks here running, and you, you can see the pictures behind it. It was manually positioned with the CSS. I've also got uh, some divs that have the ID C under 1, which is representing the image for one of them, and then C under 2, and uh, there's a lot of repeat code here. You can um, condense this if you want by putting uh, pound C under 1, comma pound C under 2, and whatever styles they're sharing, keep, and whatever's unique to each other, then you'll have to write another uh, style. but we've got a lot of stuff here. We've got a position, a couple backgrounds, which uh, you can Z one out in order to use the other. Um, there's width, height, top, left, border radius, Z index, padding margin, text align, another background. Uh, here's a note that said fixed moves and resizes with window size. Uh, that's why this is misspelled Z out because I didn't want it fixed, but if you want to take that Z off and see what it'll do, go ahead. All right, WebKit, you got background sizes for different browsers all set to cover. And here for C under 2, it's basically the same thing. It was a copy and paste. The only thing that was changing were uh, background images. And let me see. The top and the left is 58 and 48 for this. The top and the left are 58 and 410 for this because you were manually moving the images um, so that they fit perfectly over top of the clock. Okay, so with the div, with the ID of clock one, we have um, these divs as well. Pound HH1 stands, uh, that's for hours, hour hand. Uh, pound MH1 is minute hand, one. And pound SH1 is uh, short for sh uh, seconds hand. And the one just indicates we're talking about the first clock, which is this one over here to the left. And the, and the uh, styles that we have there, we have the position set, we have transform origin set, uh, which, as Adam indicates in his video, it lets you rotate um, from the bottom. The hands rotate from the bottom. There's a background, a border radius, and an opacity set. The opacity is set to 1 so that you can see those hands nice and clearly instead of it having any transparency. It's solid. Now, as well as these hands sharing all of these styles, we also have the hands having their own unique styles as well. So in the div that is, uh, the ID is clock one, the hour hand one ID also has a width, a height, a top, a left, and a background that's unique to itself. Same thing with uh, the div with the ID of clock one. And inside of that, we have a div with the ID MH1. Here's the unique styles for that, for the minute hand. And then you get down to here, and these are the uni unique styles for the um, seconds hand that's inside of the div called clock one. We do the same thing all over again, basically copies and pastes, and then positioning so that it positions uh, into this second analog clock further to the right here on the page. Um, we've got position, transform, origin, background, color, border, race, and opacity. So it looks like uh, some repeat here. You can condense this code so you don't have so many lines. Here we have clock 2, the hour hand 2 that's in the div called clock 2. Here, this is stylizing the minute hand for the second clock. And this is stylizing the seconds hand for the second clock. Okay, toward the end of Adam Curry's video, he gives us the ability to tack on uh, an AM or PM 
addition so that uh, you know depending on what time is this 11 20 a.m. or is it p.m. we've got some if statements uh, if conditions in the JavaScript that will show the appropriate a.m. or p.m. in here and I just was uh, trying out some different font styles here for variety and anyway um, he is using Meridium and since I have two of these I have ID Meridium 1 and ID Meridium 2 they're sharing the styles inside of their curly brackets they're sharing the, the styles in their curly brackets when they're together like this but then they also have some unique things and this is how you break them here they're a couple sharing styles and here they're single with their own unique styles. so they're sharing some styles and they have their own unique styles and right here the unique styles are the font families and some of these font families are z'd out because I wanted to have the I wanted to have all of them here and then just look at them by taking the z off for instance you have a font family Z imprint empty shadow so that's not showing because it's misspelled a comma and then Z old English text MT again that's misspelled a comma and then stencil so for this first one right here the font family for this PM is stencil if I go back into the code and I'm gonna misspell stencil and take the Z off of old English text save my code and then go in here now watch how my stencil changes to the the next one that is spelled properly see we have a different font there that font is old english text mt that's what that looks like it's kind of fancy now i can misspell the old english text mt and properly spell the imprint mt shadow save go to my page and refresh the browser and you'll see this change to the first one kind of plain kind of plain compared to that middle one I think I'll go back to the middle one that old English text I like that it was kind of fancy oops All right, and then on my analog clock, it has the ID of Meridium 2. Here we have the following styles. We have Pristina, which is misspelled. We have Monotype Corsiva, which is misspelled. And we have Harlow Solid Italic. That's not misspelled, and so that's what you actually see. That's this one. Let me... Z that out and get rid of the Z for the middle one and we'll see what monotype Corsiva looks like. That's going to change this over here. Okay, it's, that's kind of nice. It's not too fancy, not too plain. I kind of like it. Now let's Z that one out and get rid of the Z on Pristina and see what Pristina looks like. I'm going to move this, or change it rather. And there's Pristina. I kind of like the middle one. So I think I'm going to go back with the uh, Monotype Core Siva. I think that's the one. Yeah. Now, just going into your search and typing font go up to your fonts folder and you can see a nice variety of fonts that's on your device and you can uh, test test these out and see if you like any of them there's just a ton alright anyway so that's everything in the style uh, so there's the ending of the style tag so I can close the styles up And of course, once you get this out uh, on your device, you can change your styles and make it your own. 
All right, so we, look, we are done with the head, everything in the head tags I went over, so I can close that up. And in between the body tags, we have three field sets. Here's the first field set. The legend has number one dot Freeman's analog clock close legend. That's right here. This is the legend of the field set. The second field set, the legend for that is number two dot Lisa's analog clock. And you can see the legend right here for that field set. And then you see a third field set that I didn't do anything. There's nothing in it, but the legend just has a number three in it. And if I open this up, um, actually there's a div with the ID output three, but there's nothing else going on with that. So this is basically some little uh, section that I could put something else in here, but I could also just kill it. Why bother having it if I'm not using it right? So now it's gone down here. Now I just only have the two field sets. Okay, so let's open up the first field set. Take a look at the code. There, uh, it, uh, There's the opening and closing field set tag. Again, I told you about the legend already. There's that outermost div with the ID set to output one. And the only thing that I've done to stylize that is I've given it this like 3D white border for the outer div that's nesting all the other stuff inside. I haven't done anything exciting with that div with the ID of output one, just that. Inside of that div, we have an inner nested div that has an ID of clock one. Inside of clock one, we have a div with the ID of HH1. Again, that's for the hour hand, and one is for the first, it's, it's for this, uh, over here on the left, the Freeman's analog clock. After the hour hand, we have a div with the ID MH1, short for minute hand 1. Another div with the ID of SH1, which stands for short, uh, short second hand 1. Then here is uh, the div with the ID Meridium 1, and that's going to hold our PM, our AM or PM. There's the ending div for uh, the ending div tag for clock one. Underneath that, we have div ID equals C under one. This is where that image is going to reside. That's going to be underneath the clock. And again, the clock is going to have an opacity set, so it's got a transparency. Um, and you'll be able to see whatever image I'm putting in this div. There's the closure to the outermost div that has the ID of output one, and then there's the closure to the field set. So really, you just copy and paste all of this down here and make changes as needed. So here again, we've got our opening and closing field set tags, the legend opening and closing, number two, Lisa's analog clock, the outermost uh, shell div with the ID of output two, so we want to make sure we've got individual unique names. This is output one, clock one, HH one, meridium one, C under one, and this is all going to be the same stuff just with a two tacked on the end of it. So ID output two, inside of that div we've got the div with the ID clock two, inside of that clock two we have our um, hour hand two, minute hand two, second hand two, and then a div for AM or PM, uh, and this div has the ID of meridium two. There's the closure to clock two. Here is the div that's going to hold that background image behind the clock. It's got the ID of C under two. There's the closure to the output two div and the closure of the field set. Closing body, closing HTML. And that's all you have for the web page um, code for the HTML file. So now let's take a look at the external JavaScript that uh, we're pointing to here in the head, right here, source equals analog clock.js. Let's take a look at that JavaScript because that is what makes our code run. Let me close all this other stuff up. All right. Again, if you look at Adam Curry's videos, 
you're going to recognize this code because it's his code. He's creating a variety of variables here. Uh, var d, comma h, comma m, comma s, comma h, d, d, e, g, h, deg, comma a, m, p, m. So we're going to use these variables further down in our code. Right here, let me close these functions up. Oh, there's only one function. Let's open up this function and then this down here, uh, window.addEventListener. It's kind of like taking body equals uh, the body on load equals and then setting it to a function, but this is giving you uh, an anonymous function that will use set interval to call the function that I'm getting ready to read, the function called adjust clock. It's going to run this function that we're going to go over here in a second every second. Every second it's going to call it again and again and again. So let's go ahead and look at that. I can pull this up a little bit because all of this is together. Let's, so let's look at the function that gets called every second when the window loads. Here's a variety of statements. There's four statements. D, uh, we're using the variables that we created outside of the function up here and here we're going to assign them to stuff. So D gets assigned to new date. It's going to signify a new date. H is going to be set to, you're going to use that D variable with uh, the function get hours for your hours, and then that's going to be put in the variable called H. You're going to do the same thing for the minutes and the seconds. So M equals D dot get minutes, and S equals D dot get seconds. Here, he uses the H, D, E, G, and he sets that, he assigns that to H times 30 plus M divided by 2, and he explains it uh, very nicely in his video. So I would suggest looking at his video so that you get a better understanding of the code. It has something to do with the fact that we're looking at a clock and we have to go 360 degrees uh, around the clock. There are, um, what do you say, 60 minutes in an hour and um, Let's see how to see. This is why I'd rather you just watch his video because he can explain it better. I'll just mumble. Now here's the if condition that will give us a.m. or p.m. And it's I like how he put it just in one line, like this. If in parentheses h is greater than or equal to 12, if that's true, then a.m. p.m. is going to be set to the string p.m. If that's not true, then you're going to go to the else. And then the variable am, pm is going to be set to the string am. So with this single line right here, we get to uh, have this portion say am or pm and be correct. Then we've got these following four statements that we're going to cut and paste because you're going to do it here for the HH1, MH1, SH1, and Meridium 1. And then you're just going to paste it over here and do the same thing and just change all those 1s to 2s. So HH1.style.transform equals rotate. And in parentheses and double quotes, we are going to uh, put in, concatenate by using the plus symbols, the variable HDEG which you've got this expression on the right and the value of that expression is going to be held in HDEG plus DEG. You're going to do something similar here. MH1.style.transform equals rotate parentheses M times 6 plus DEG. And then for the seconds, sh1.style.transform equals rotate, parentheses, plus s times 6, plus deg. Finally, the meridium meridium1.innerHTML equals ampm. Because we did the if condition up here, we already know what the value, uh, the code knows the value of ampm. And by this statement, you're going to take that value and you're going to stick it in the inner HTML of the portion of the web page that has the uh, ID Meridium 1. 
So then, like I said, you're just going to take these four statements, copy and paste them so that you can do the same thing to your second clock. You just have to make sure that you're naming them correctly. And then there's your closing um, curly brace for this function adjust clock. So we're going to close that out. And then again, this is just, uh, you're taking, you're adding an event listener to the window. We want to listen for when the page loads, for when the window loads. And the function is going to use set interval to call the function named adjust clock every 1000 milliseconds, which means every second. So it's very simple set of code. Uh, go ahead and um, do what you want with it. I highly recommend you look at Adam Corey's videos because he does an excellent job of explaining as he goes along and um, and he does it in a very short time frame. And again this is all that it does. It just gives you an analog clock that you can stick somewhere on your web page and uh, by following my design, you can put any image that you want as a background, and by using uh, opacity, give it a tr you know make it a little transparent, um, so you can make your little analog clock more interesting. I'm not sure if you can stick a video back there, but I'm thinking you can put an image or a video on anything, so that might be kind of strange, but I might want to try that sometime, see if I could slide a video in there somehow in a div and just line it up. 